Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Say Trading, Frank, the free market update webinar on a very critical moment in the market. And that's the reason why I'm doing this. This session will be uploaded on the Clueless Eight YouTube channel. Any of the attendees here and all members who will be listening to this later should subscribe for free, of course, to the Clueless Eight trading channel so that anytime I'm posting anything, at any given time, you will be notified automatically via your e email that you post there. Uh, and uh, I think that's extremely um, important. So please uh, do that after tonight. So, um, full disclosure, this session is primarily and exclusively for financial education and not for any solicitation or advice. We all know that, but full, still have to do the disclosure. Content of this session. What we're going to attempt to do tonight is look at an overview of the market. In my opinion, at a very critical juncture, good, bad, or ugly, we don't know yet. Talk a little bit about the behavioral aspects of the business, which dominate almost 90% of our trade management, which we all know. Talk a bit about the macroeconomic backdrop as to why things happen, why they happen, and the international effects of currency, central bank policy, and basic economics that drive our markets. And on the final thing, we will open it up to Q&A, where we'll look at a bunch of stocks that you guys will bring up to the forefront, and I'll try to make some intelligent assessments as to what might happen. What I do want to say is I do thank all of you for all your support. I am grateful that this service is only alive because of all your support. So despite my rants here and there and my hardcore clueless say trading boot camp style talk at certain times in the chat room, my intentions are always good. I want everyone to see what I see to have the same tools that I have, which everyone can have, and to have, most importantly, the mental framework, that's the best way I can put it, which took years for me to develop. But I've always been a risk taker in life, so maybe some of you are not, maybe some of you are far more risk takers. I know members in my group who are not always in the chat room or never in the chat room who talk to me who are such risk takers that they follow every single one of my charts from point A to point C. And the returns that they're getting, I'm not even coming close to them on a percentage basis. So I'll tell you, there are people out there who are hidden in plain sight within the Clue to Say Trading Club who are just doing tremendous. It doesn't mean they don't have losses here and there. But boy, do they make those losses up and more. A couple of things that I want to remind everyone, which everyone can relate to because this is what we go through every single day. All these charts that we look at and all these things that we, that we try to make head or tail about and make some sense about is simply a manifestation of human behavior, of investor behavior, of trader behavior, and most importantly, of computerized algorithmic high-frequency trading programs that are programmed by human. And many of our members, even many here, who are IT, who are, uh, uh, IT professionals, very smart people, know very well that AI, artificial intelligence, and computer-driven programs, which dominate almost 80% of the markets on a daily basis, how fast how quick, how self-learning they can be. So what I try to do in my limited capacity as a human being, which I am, by the way, I'm not a robot, um, is um, I'd like to have an assistant who's actually an algo robot, to be honest with you. Um, but what I try to do is try to be a little bit ahead of the game and I constantly, hours and hours and hours, every single day, not while I'm, not just when I'm engaging with all of you, 
But when I'm sitting there staring at my multiple screens, trying to make head or tail out of what is going on, the amount of time that I spend <coughs> in staring at the screens and looking for pattern symmetries, technical aspects of technical aspects of um, everything that's going on does have a taxing effect on my brain cells. But then this is my passion. This is my living. This is what I do to pay the bills. So always remember one thing, that whatever I do, I never take it lightly. Because I got a lot of fat bills to pay, believe me. And I'm not the wolf of Wall Street. I'm not sitting there blowing money and burning $100 bills. Every single dollar earned, I thank God for it. Because there are people out there who are dying for $10, who are mugging other people for $100 or an iPhone. And we're lucky enough to trade and make 100% in a single day. Remember all these things, 100%, 150% on tactical trades. There is no other business than this business that you all are listening to. And believe me when I tell you, I didn't choose this business just because I'm stupid. That's one thing I'm not. I might be dumb at times. My wife might think I'm, uh, you know, stupid at times. I think everyone's wife thinks that. but. I will tell you, this is the most fascinating, most profitable business that you'll ever do. So that brings me to the next point. That brings me to the next point. I'm going to scroll through charts as I'm giving you my introductory statements. Is everybody wants to be an expert at what, is the, what, what we are doing. But there are very few, and this is the God honest truth, who want to put in the blood, sweat, and tears in a figurative way to learn, to suffer the pain, and master whatever we can master. Nobody can master the market, I'll tell you that. Because there are, it's just like game theory. There are way too many variables. There are way too many players. But at least we can quantify the outcomes based on the variables that are going into the model. That's what game theory is all about, right? It's a game of probability, not a game of certainty. I don't say that lightly. The fact that our probability hit ratio on the Clueless A trading service is so high in multiple instances does say something about the work and the effort and the knowledge that is being put through in everything that we're doing, whether it's in charts, whether it be in analytical comments, whether it be in Periscope broadcast, and whether it be in videocasts that are po posted out there, and webinars such as this. So what I ask all of you to do, at your own pace, mind you, nobody is compul this is, you know, nobody, I'm not, com uh, uh, this is not a game of compulsion. You do it at your own pace, but do it fast. It's put in the hard work that's necessary to master many things that I teach. And I am no master, by the way, and neither am I a genius. I am just an extremely avid, passionate reader of the financial markets because I believe that the markets are nothing but a manifestation of human emotions. Just the way we lead our lives being manic and you know what are the markets either they're manic or they're depressive they get euphoria or despair those are the two extremes of the market and in between the market is never normal you hear a lot in the media you hear a lot in the media that oh it's market is fairly valued the market is never fairly valued never don't believe the hype the market is never uh, 
never fairly valued. What's fairly valued? That everyone thinks that, oh, the market's like, cheap, you know, it's, it's all fair right now so I can get in. Does the market ever, on the long or short side, and I ask everyone this, and every one of you know the answers, wave a green flag and says, okay, buy me or sell me? Never. Even of these critically high, severe overbought levels, the market is not an easy short. You all know that. Can it be a tactical short intraday or a multi-day period? Absolutely. Do we know whether we have a swing short that can last for a couple of weeks on a straight line down? It never works like that. In hindsight, we can look at it. Look at the daily chart of the biotech index. In hindsight, we can say, oh, I really shorted the market. And there are many services which will tell you that. They're a bunch of liars. Oh, I shorted the biotech index at around 2090, and I covered it all the way down at 240, 238. Garbage. Because the markets never go down in a straight line. Every one of these daily candles that you're looking at, and candle study and understanding requires a lot of work. This candle looks like a negative, obviously, outside negative bearish candle but it wasn't this during the day when it was happening it's when you're looking back at it weeks after the fact it all makes sense just the way in our lives weeks after the fact or months after the fact we look back and say oh yeah that's right i should have done that or i did that and it have worked so in hindsight everything is 2020 but we're, while we're going through the battle of every single day, every single week, it's never that simple. Once we accept that, we are on the way to becoming real, efficient, and effective traders and investors. This is not just about trading. It's the same thing about investing. On the way up here, this phenomenal move, I'm just showing the biotech index in this particular case, I showed this pattern symmetry where it might go. Would I like to remind all my esteemed members who are here right now and everyone who's going to be listening that it hit exactly that right there, right there, right at that point where I had drawn it. Isn't that amazing? Does that mean that I bought the IBB down here and I'm waiting for it to sell it out here and make myself a million dollars? No. But does that does it not mean that along the way made some very good tactical trades, showed the consolidation level, the breakout and the entry into the channel, which can go all the way up to 292, which I believe will happen because that is pattern symmetry. Why is it pattern symmetry? It's because human beings behave the same way. Look at all of us. Look at all of you. Look at the chat room. Nothing wrong, bad or good, but learn from it. Silent when the markets are having retracement days. A nice fat retracement candle to kiss the 34-day moving average. Oh my God, everyone's freaking out. I get more comments from everyone, which is fine. Which is fine. But at least learn from it. People screaming and shouting like, oh my God, you know. Or just making comments like, okay, this is the beginning of the end and all that stuff. And what do traders do in the meantime? They drop out. It's a shame. Look, you guys, many of you, I'm not all of you, I'll say, are, in my opinion, probably ca character-wise, much stronger people than I am. But when it comes to this, miss, this business, I don't think any of you can beat me when it comes to char a character of trading character. So why don't you apply all, this, all the ca character strengths that you applied in order to get where you got to? And I know some of you personally have talked to you. In fact, I've talked to most of you personally. You're very successful in what you did. So apply the same things in this business. Why is that when it comes to trading and investing and the, and the financial markets, all of a sudden, you all are just complete babies? Not all of you. 
quite a few of you. It just doesn't make sense. But that is exactly what markets and trading does. It makes the normality of what you do in your real life and the great decisions that you make in your normal life, you completely, you know, you completely have to turn it over your head and look at the market in a far more robotic way than the than the, and then the so-called. Somebody has to mute the mic, please. Um, so-called. Please, somebody has to mute the mic because I hear the wife talking in the back. Yes? Okay, thank you. We don't want any wife yelling at us, right? Just kidding. Um, so bottom line is that that if you just apply your daily fight or flight or fight, which is basically, as you know, when the when the grizzly bear is rushing you, you just want to basically get your diapers and run for the, you know, run for the next cave. Well, it doesn't work like that in the markets. So what I try to do is I try to put a lot of tactical pictures and charts and some very severe and analysis, critical analysis in my own fashion. Using some of the standard technical procedures too, to show people that it's not the beginning of the end or it's not the end of the beginning. And that is what technical analysis is all about. Clueless say trading employs a certain level of technical trading, which is unique. And I mean that. And why it's unique is because we use, or I use, there is no second me, a level of technical analysis which is drawn from years of experience. Years of experience of making mistakes of taking big losses because I didn't know what the heck the charts were looking at. I picked on very fast. The other advantage that all of you have in sticking with my service is the fact that I worked on Wall Street for many, many years. Doesn't make, make me a genius. It simply makes me the fact that when you're in the wealth management business and you are somebody like me who studies market cycles, since 1996, I have seen multiple multiple market cycles that have been that have taken place i'm a survivor of 911 i almost got blown up that morning 20 minutes apart okay i mean that i had friends who died that day it's a very personal thing for me what did the markets do on 911 we shut down for a week we came back we went down a bit and then we took off. So I always say, and then, and then of course, the big crash in 2008, 2009, March 9, 2009 was the low in the market. I was through all that stuff. So when people come to me and sometimes they rebut and I act my own way, it's because I have the experience. It doesn't mean I'm gonna be right every single time, but remember one thing, every crisis, Every crisis is the same, as I've said many times, for different reasons. And it's the same thing that in your life. Every crisis that you'll go through, and believe me, I've gone through enough to write a book. And I've come across every one of them winning. And it's a fact. And this is not the Trump speech. Okay? So the point is that even when the ones you lose, you learn from them. And it makes you stronger. So every crisis is the same, the same thing in the market and the same thing in your lives, my friends. Okay, that, but for different reasons. But like they say, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Because if I'm dead, you wouldn't be listening to this webinar, right? So there are great services out there. There are great technicians out there. There are people much smarter than me, and maybe they're looking at things differently. So what I always tell people is use me as a resource, not as an exclusive mentor. I am both a motivational, technical, and a strategic mentor. 
There are services out there which will give you, you know, like the order flow stuff. You have a bunch of them, right? They'll show you all the different order flows going through this and that and all that stuff and all fine and good. But I'll tell you one thing. No service spends so much time and energy working with members, putting out free webinars, advanced coaching sessions for a few extra bucks every weekend to teach them to see things and act on them so they are more independent. Like they say, teach a man how to fish, they, they live forever, live, they'll feed themselves for a lifetime. No service does that. Not for the amount of money that I'm charging. So I'm not gonna get into the money part, but believe me, appreciate it. I'm not always gonna be right, but I'm gonna be heck of a lot of times more right than wrong. And you all know that, and especially the ones who have been with me. Okay, so the behavioral aspect is so critical. It's not easy. Look at these patterns. Heavy volatility. Do I blame anybody to freak out in the middle of the day when there are sell programs coming in? All of a sudden, something's up five, ten bucks. Next thing you know, it's down five bucks for no reason other than a hedge fund day trading like crazy. No, but it doesn't mean that you all have to freak out. It means that you have to spend time and energy, not just attending the free webinars, but signing off for the advanced coaching sessions, which I've pleaded with many, many people to do. And the ones who have seriously done it have all benefited. Don't believe me? Read the testimonials. Talk to them directly. They're huge. They're huge. But here is the key thing. Okay, here is the key thing. It doesn't matter what I teach. It's how you execute what you learn is what is going to make you a phenomenal trader. You can take, like I say, a horse to the watering hole. You can make a drink. You ever try doing that? Don't try doing that. My son rode um, uh, uh, um, when he was, uh, since he was eight years old, he rode horses till he was in his early teens. And then he got into high performance cars. So forget the horses. Then he won the horsepower. And I used to watch him. And he used to, when he was little, he was very good at it as an equestrian. So he, uh, he tried to get the horse to do what he wanted. Didn't work. Got to go with it. So it's the same thing I'm telling you. Trading is nothing but the way. You learn, first of all, you have to know the tools. This is what this is about. But the behavioral aspect of it, you need to really work on yourself. Now, in order to work on that, you have to obviously know the technical stuff. And you also have to understand uh, that what we call the cognitive bias of what your outlook of the world is. If you think it's all about guns and booze and we're going to sit in a cave and everyone's going to attack us and kill us and stuff like that, okay? that there is going to be a massive race war in the United States, and believe me, it's coming from a Republican like me, okay, then you're always going to do stupid things, which is you're not going to play the market right, and you're going to keep on losing money. It's a fact. Since 2009, and may I show you this, since 2009, right at the bottom here, I have heard the same old frigging excuses on the market can go higher. It's all the central banks. They're all a bunch of crooks. Well, who cares? Because you have to remember one thing. Life is not fair. Like they say, you want fair? Go to a circus. Go to a nice fair on a Sunday morning. Markets are not fair. Markets are always manipulated. That's just the way life is. You think your life is fair? No. So from down here, from 2009, at 666, the devil's number, March 9, 2009, I was there, I know. Markets went up. Oh, it can't go up. Little correction. Oh, my God, we're going to go down. Went up again, 2010. Big drop. That was a big drop for that time, by the way, right here. 
and listen carefully. Believe me, the more you know about market history, the better off you'll do. And I'm spending the time and energy to explain this to all of you. Then a big ramp up all the way into 2011. Oh, everyone's getting all excited. Except nobody was really investing in the market. Just the way nobody's really investing directly in the market. As a wealth manager, I dealt with high net worth retail as well as institutional accounts. Institutional accounts were easy to deal with because they were more logical. High net worth clients, including very educated clients, and one of my biggest bases of clients were IT consultants and and. Um, Corporate consultants, Price Waterhouse Cooper, stuff like that, IBM consultants. Smart people. When it came to the market, dumb as a dead rock. This is what happens. So bottom line is that, so then came the big fall. Oh, it's all over. And believe me, I knew far less about technicals at that point than I did do now. Okay? So same story went up little down same old story here's the problem nobody bought here maybe they bought a little bit here then came the little correction they all bailed market went up big time maybe they bought here I have a chart from stock tweets actually I gotta dig that up I know it's in my Dropbox somewhere would I actually put these captions funny but true captions about what was going on so nobody's there. Then the market takes off, pulls back here, takes off again. Nobody believes the market. No, the market can't go higher. Somebody please. Please. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, have you muted the mic, please? Can everyone hear me? Please respond. Can everyone hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. good. Yes. Somebody had left the mic open, a lot of static, you know, looked like uh, they were in a loud place. So, hey. oh, here we go. Somebody please mute their mic. Marcos is at six flags. Okay, if he's coming down the slide, tell him to mute us himself. Okay, so uh, that's that's actually a lot of commitment. He's at Six Flags and he's listening to this webinar. God bless him, you know. For a Canadian guy, that's a lot of commitment. Anyway, um, so then we go up a little bit more. Then we make another run into 2013. Believe me, I have the comments from every... I started my service on 2011. Well, what am I saying? Not to that. 2011, I started posting on StockTwit. I started my service in 2014 here. I remember it was tax day, market was falling, and I bought the market right here. We have not, that only time that I had that go down below that was down here in 2015. And 2000, you know, yeah. This was 2015, 2016. Yep, when we went to 1800 back in January. So as we are climbing along this path, and massive, these are big, massive moves, okay? This, this was the big one. This was the big one from 2015. The flash crash, you name it, everything that happened. Okay? There was nothing bigger than this. And now that dragon bullish formation that's in place. In between corrective formations that are, that are going to take place. I think this was the only stretch that investors actually started to get in. I, I saw a very inter, uh, a powerful report that uh, that uh, that money was put in the inflow of equity mutual funds from the money markets into the market came about after we dropped 900 points on Brexit, which is a good sign. But I don't think the mom and pop, and neither any of the traders per se, are that aggressive. Aggression, which I want to remind people, has to come of tactical bottoms. That is the least, that is exactly when it doesn't come. 
I did point out, listen to my other older video cast of Brexit, that there was a possibility that we would basically get back the all time highs. And there was a good possibility, and I mentioned this several times, that if we keep on hitting the same ceiling, that we would break out. That is exactly what we did. So ladies and gentlemen, no one can blame me for being incorrect about my forecast, how you manage your trades, how you do the trade management between MYOT, which is manage your own trades, and doing all that stuff. That's up to you. My service is not designed to frame your trades. You do it on your own. My service is designed to give you forecasts, to give you alerts, and then you can frame your trades whichever way you want. You want to do complicated spreads, you want to do straddles, you want to do this, and there are option guys here who are far smarter than I am. I'm just a simple guy who likes to buy linear binary calls, puts, with hedges and stuff like that. It works for me because, because to me, the last thing I want to do is complicate my brain with way too many complicated strategies and manage them while I lose focus of the bigger picture. This is the bigger picture. And I called every one of these pictures to almost 80 to 90% accuracy. And it's a fact. Have I, uh, and I won't ever lie, have I uh, uh, executed as perfectly and flawlessly as I should have? Nope, I haven't. Why? Because you all know that. You guys do it a lot. I do it less. It's called volatility. Because of volatility, okay, because of volatility and the chop, 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 we don't tend to hold very large positions overnight because the fear of what can happen overnight takes us away from that. But I still have positions, long or short. The bias is long, so mostly long. Still, you know, still if I'm really bullish, you know, I have a bunch of S&P contracts or RUT contracts, which next morning opens up 60, 70, 100% higher. How beautiful is that feeling? Some of you have felt that, many of you have not. Which brings me to my next point, which is about confidence. Okay? And there's an old saying, and I'm try, uh, um, about, uh, about confidence. Confidence is the biggest drug that you can ever have. And it says con confidence, this is the word, is contagious. You ever meet people who when you talk to, you're having a couple of beers, you know, having a scotch or, you know, drink, and they actually uplift you. They make you feel like you can really, you know, kick butt. And I'm talking about having a couple of drinks, not snorting a couple of lines. Okay? That's called confidence. If you're a pessimist, don't be in this business. If you're an optimist, doesn't mean you have to be long all the time. But if you're an optimist, long, short, what is optimism? Optimism is long, short, you're ready to attack the market and make money every single day, every single week whatever comes your way. Yes, you have to know the tools. That's why you're here. So I commend you all. But if you do not have that type of attitude, please do not be a trader. And at the same time, if you want me to change your behavior anomalies and your characteristics of the way you are, it's not going to work. Because I don't know you. You might have baggage that I hear all the time from traders, oh, I did this, I traded this stock, it was terrible, price line, oh my God, you know, it's all killed me. Who cares? I told a good trader uh, and, a, and a new member, great guy, today, you didn't have the luxury of looking at my price line charts before you were trading that. You were trading price line based on bullshit stock twits comments or your own feelings about what might happen. I have been I, at least 60 to 70 percent right on price line on every on every tactical trade. One of the most difficult stocks to trade and one of the most profitable ones. So 
what charts have done for me, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to share it with people. That this has given me a floor to stand on, to look at things objectively, and to make a determination whether or not it's a tactical buy, whether it's a swing buy, whether it's a swing short or a tactical short, and doing that. Why can others do that? Learn the resources from all different sources. I am just one. But I do have a very contrarian way of looking at the markets. Okay? And that's one thing hopefully you learn. Because everybody looks at the market, most, most traders, look at the feeling. Always pretty much bearish or, you know, or too happy about the market. Most of them really bearish, to be honest with you because they are either central bank haters or whatever they are. I mean, like I always say, tra as traders, stop being an analyst or an analyst and stop being trying to be a central banker. Stick to your own day job and try to figure out how to make money on a daily basis based on technicals and stuff that you know and stuff that I put out. Because the more you try to be politically motivated and dogmatic, whether it's on the bullish side or the bearish side, you are going to be finished. Sitting there trying to manage trillions of dollars worth of sovereign debt and making your own assumptions why it's good or bad, it's not going to take you anywhere. So if you want to be Janet Yellen's hater, then send her an email, tell her to meet you in Brooklyn where she grew up, and I can assure you, she'll put you down in two minutes. All right? And I'm a pretty hardcore fiscal conservative, okay? I don't agree with a lot of the things the central banks do. But I, I, I know reality. And I know market history and global history. And I know that the United States of America, whether you like to believe it or not, is always going to rule for a long time to come, regardless of what the Fed is doing and anything. And the garbage that you hear that we're going to be in the, excuse my friend, shithole in a few years' time, I've been hearing this for so long, you know, it's just like, forget it, is all garbage. We have the finest minds here. We have the finest companies here. Yes, we have our problems. But you know what? Look at our group. How many nationalities are here? How many names that I can't even pronounce? And how smart are they? So for God's sakes, all this garbage about us going downhill and stuff. And yes, we do have problems and we don't fix it. At some point, we will. Maybe 100 years down the road. We won't be around. And I'm not going to draw charts 100 years out. So think about that for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that for a minute. Constantly berating and being, being a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's the word for self-hater? Okay. It's not going to do anything for you. And the big one, when it comes, we're going to drop to Dow 10,000. Well, at some point, we will have a correction. I've talked about this in my other video cast. You know, it could be two years from now, three years from now. So what are you going to do? Make that big macro bet which doesn't work out? Come on. Wake up to reality. Stop living on some sort of dopium. It's called depression opium. Okay, I just made the word up. All right? And stop living on hopium either. But. The global economies, whatever they're going through with the central banks, whatever they're doing, flush with liquidity is not going to make the global economy collapse. They said Japan was going to be a deadbeat country 20 years ago. Japan's doing great. Ever been to Tokyo? Ever been to the Ginza district? Try to buy an Hermes back for $10,000, which you can buy for four here. Believe me, I know global travel. I've been to more countries than most of you guys can name. So don't live in a fishbowl like we are, 
and think of think of uh, and look at everything from the fishbowl out. Try 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 to look at the situation, the financial markets, the economy in the U.S. from the like from a fish's eye. I mean, fishbowl from the outside in. Everybody looks at it from the inside out. That's why, let me say it in New York language, we all fuck up. Okay? Because we're constantly looking at our domestic view of why our market shouldn't do this and do that, why we're overvalued, why we're completely going to die, you know, this and that. Tactical corrections? Absolutely. But look at the history of the markets from hello. From when? Actually, I started in Wall Street in 1996. From 1997. Look at this. History of the markets. Actually, pretty much from when I started. Does this really look like we are going to hell in a handbasket? <laughs> so it's good to be. Let's do this. Oh, wow. We're really going into a global depression here. This is one heck of an inverted hammer of a five millennial whatever it is look at this oh this is amazon so sorry i apologize let's look at the dow jones and oh, that's amazon now i sound like an idiot hold on one second wow that was one heck of a chart for amazon so this is your market for you let me move all this drawings delete all drawings all 23 drawings gone ladies and gentlemen this goes back to 1920. Ever seen this chart? Most of you haven't. <clears throat> Most of you haven't. This is 1920. My beloved father, who passed away back in 1997, was born in 1924. He was a great doctor. Smart guy. He's a surgeon, actually. So. 1924. This is your frigging stock market for you, ladies and gentlemen, clueless trade, uh, me, uh, trading members. Does this really look like we're going to hell in a handbasket yet? This was the big 19, 2000, the big tech when everybody wanted to invest in the market. I was there in the market. The big tech boom. That was the only time, just so you know. And this market is very important, so you can put your head, recalibrate, mental recalibration. I said that on the, on the, on, you know, I say that quite a bit. And uh, some new member got a little offended, like, why do you talk like that? I said, because that's what I do. I'm trying to help people. You have to mentally recalibrate. I try to mentally recalibrate every single day, every single night. Why can't you? They said, oh, it really hurts. I'm like, oh, well, I'm sorry. Why, you had a bad day? Yes, I was losing money. Okay, I'm sorry. That brings me to my other quick point. Have alligator skin. Don't have soft skin that any time the little trader language goes in, your skin punctures. Please, have thick skin. Be strong. This is a battle. If you want to win the battle like our brave and courageous Marines and our armed forces do, they don't have soft skin. So traders don't need to have soft skin either. And I mean that as a friend. So, if you want to cry about things, do it at your own pace, but please, as a trader, you're not going to get anywhere with feeling hurt, okay? So, this was 1999, the big tech boom, and bang, we went down. Can somebody answer me? Actually, stay on the line for one second because I need to fix something, so I'll be back in about three minutes.
Thank you for holding on. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Can everyone hear me? Are we still on? Hello? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, good. All right, good. Just want to make sure that uh, we didn't get disconnected or anything. All right. So, um, so when you look at this from a broader perspective, you clearly see where we're going. We're going higher. And if you want to be a little bit technical, you say, okay, what's this green line right there? Acceleration band. Where is acceleration band here? 18,865. Right? It's climbing. It's climbing. It's on a serious ascent up. Isn't it amazing how these lines match? So if it's going to climb, so we can do this. Very simple. Like I do my charts on uh, stock twits, I put the fifth grader version. Well, this is a fifth grader version. So one can say, okay, we can climb all the way up to 18,864. We went as high as 18,644, uh, uh, and we can go as high as 18,900. Call it 19,000. What's the big deal? If it keeps on climbing, it's probably going to be higher than that. But just for the sake of quick analysis, we can say 18,864. That's 350 points from here, or roughly. 350 points, we can get that in two days. And then we say, okay, enough is enough. Let's try to you know, ease back a little bit. Most of the times on a monthly basis, yearly basis, when we hit the upper acceleration band, look what happens. We blow through it. That's when the euphoria, this is the euphoric stage, okay? This is the euphoria stage right there. Right there. When we blow through these acceleration bands. We're certainly, this line here is the Bollinger Band. So we're above the Bollinger Band. So if we blow up and go up to 19,000 or so, that's when euphoria sets in. Not talking about the short-term euphoria that we're going through right now, which I talked about extensively. 62.7% bulls on the Investor Blogging Network on TickerSense, which I've tracked for years, is a very high number. We are going to do a nice, Nice tactical correction. No question about it. Might last two days. Might last three hours. I don't know, but it's going to happen. So on a long-term perspective, this is where we're going. We're going to about 19,000. Big deal. Now, when does the depression stuff come through? This certainly looked like it, right? Back in 2008, 2009, 2009, March 9th. Big hammer reversal. I'm going to ask a question now, and I need some answers. It doesn't have to be intelligent answer, just a simple observational answer. Can somebody tell me, based on the candle, uh, 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 the candle representation that you see in front, what is common between 2009 and now? Please step up to the stage. I'm waiting. The long reversal candle? Yes. Same shape. Yes, one second here. I'm just typing it in for people who can hear, you know, between. 2009 and uh, okay so go ahead who responded that's me uh, Frank who I, long I, 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 first of all you. don't just say just me I know it's Harry but introduce yourself it's Harry right Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. You know, but not, not everyone knows your lovely voice. Okay. So, uh, so okay. So you're saying this pattern symmetry. This it's known as a. 
it's known as a hammer reversal, correct? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else see that? Anyone else like to respond? Yes, I see that too. And who is that? Can you say your name, please? Uh, Rike. Okay. Who else sees that? Is everyone else sleeping or they just can't hear me? Okay, JB says I do, okay. Does all attendees here hear my question? I guess we're not going to get any answers. Okay. So what I'm going to get, and I don't want to waste uh, too much time. The bottom line is, you're absolutely correct, gentlemen. Look at this pattern. Let me draw this right. Look at this massive candle reversal, and look at this. What does it tell you, the after effects of that candle? What happens after that candle reversal on a on a yearly basis? Remember, this is a yearly chart. This is 2009. This is 2016. What does happen? What happens? Just pure technical basis. Forget emotions. Forget garbage. On a technical basis, what happens once you get these reversal candles? A higher highs. Absolutely. So if we were robots, which we're not, and we were not like super analytical, we would say, hold on a minute here. This is the same stuff that happened in like this, you know, because nowhere along the line here did we get a, well, this was a massive bullish engulfing. That's a different story. But aside from here, this is exactly, it's almost the same size as this reversal. Yes? So what is this telling you? It's telling you that it looks like we're going to get a few more of these going up. So looking at the yearly charts, it's very you know, a simplistic analysis, deduction of this move tells us that we're going to get more of these type of things. In other words, we're going higher on a longer term basis where am i seeing on a technical basis the big bear market where i'm just trying to you know ask the question in my head this is where dogmatic behavior comes in the pure dogmatic belief in our lives and in many traders' li uh, uh, viewpoints is that we are going to just crash and die because that's all they really hear from most of the media. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm like, rah, 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 you know, put all my capital at work and buy everything that I have in Amazon is going to go to a thousand bucks. No. I'm just giving you the broader picture. So basically, the dogmatic bearish viewpoint which has not worked one bit since 2009. In fact, hasn't worked much at all since 2000, to be honest with you, because this was the big move in 2000, okay? But more so from 2009, the ultimate bottom for now. So from a technical perspective, why is everyone so bearish? Why are you all so bearish? Most of you are, I know that. Deep down, cuddle that little teddy bear at night. Why? Why am I cautiously trading? I am. I'm not using more than 40% of my trading capital. That's why I always have some cash on the side to take advantage of things going on. So why am I not like going hog wild and saying, oh my God, look at this yearly chart. I should just buy every single dip. Because that's how 
volatility dictates global events dictates the greek thing will come up are they getting that loan you know is uh, another uh, 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 islamic fundamentalist terrorist going to put another bomb somewhere you know is france going to fall apart is brexit going to kill us is germany just not you know you know whatever but what are the markets telling us to wake up call what are the markets telling us the market is saying I'm going like this unless you start to see something like this what's there to be bearish about does it not mean that we can have tactical corrections absolutely one tactical correction can bring us down to 16,500 I believe that I think there's a big fat tactical correction coming in September as the market gets really nervous about who might be the next president of the United States of America between September and October. October is always pretty much a dramatic month till the 15th. What happens after the 15th? Can anyone tell me? Please, I need some answers. That's why I need a mic and a headset, please, for every one of you. If I'm going to do this at my own time, I need something from you guys. A mic and a headset. Go to Amazon, buy one. So I need some responses, please. What happens af generally after October 15th? And what happens prior to October 15th? Lee, don't give me a political answer. You're not at a Trump convention here, okay? Instability is bad for markets. What does that mean? I'm asking you a simple question. Give me in simple English. What generally happens on the first part of October? Anyone care to answer? What happens? I'm going to type this in. What happens? No, I'm going to give it a shot, Frank. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you speak, please? The by the um, since it it's getting close to the end of the year. People try to boost the market. To I ask you, uh, one second, you're giving me too long-winded answer. You're not going to win any votes if you're a politician, Harry, okay? I'm asking a straightforward answer. What happens around the, uh, around the first part of October, starting at the end, uh, roughly around, you know, forget September, what happens in the first part of October? Does the market go down or up? I don't want the reasons. I know the reasons. Down. Okay. Anyone else? Brokers come back to work. Lee, man, you need really you need mental calibration. Brokers come back to work. What kind of talk is that? I love you, Lee, but seriously, that's a dumb answer. Can somebody give me, you know, Harry's answer was a straightforward answer. Down. So is it down or up? Maybe he's Lee's getting some sort of like delayed thing because he's sitting out there in beautiful, you know. Okay, Lee said First part of October, markets go up, okay? Nimesh said goes up. I need more answers. I'm sorry, who was that? Charles. Who is this? Charles. I'm sorry, can you type it in? Um, who are you? I'm so Charles. Look, I can't really hear you, so could you type in your name, please? Excuse me, can you answer, please? Do I have any responses from anyone or am I just going to like close out the session? And by the way, who is um who is Ray? Ray, can you identify yourself please?
Ray, can you identify yourself? Okay, Ray, uh, Ray just left. Maybe he's a Russian spy. Maybe he's one of Putin's friends. That's great. I'd like, always like to find out, like, who creeps in. Anyway, all right, let's get to it. The prize goes to JB, prize goes to Harry. You're right. Markets go down first and then they tend to move up now the reason why that happens is because what is the fiscal year end for the largest 800 pound gorilla that controls the market can anyone tell me what the largest 800 pound gorilla who controls the market what sector of the money management business this is why everybody needs a frigging microphone. Because I'm trying to teach some real big stuff here. Can somebody tell me who the 800 pound gorillas are in the market? Who, who have the most money to play in the markets? Financial. Excuse me, what? What kind of answer is financial? What's financials? You mean banks? Yes. Yes. No. Wrong answer. You're close, but wrong answer. And who was that, by the way? Harry. Okay. You're close. You know, it's somebody with a shitloads of money. What's what complex has the biggest amount of money? The federal government. JB, you're another like you know hardcore like you know uh, the gun totting guy. I mean, relax. Federal of course the federal government has money, but the federal government ain't buying stocks, okay? I'm talking about people who are players in the stock market. Who's the one who control, who have the block? You see, if you don't know these basics, you never know how to trade the market. That's why I'm very good at what I do. So I'm trying to teach you good stuff. This is probably the most important webinar you'll attend in a long time. I can teach you all the technicals. You'll still screw up. Because you don't know the basics of it. So I'm trying to teach you that. So who do you think, what complex, what sector of the financial market holds the most money and controls it? And most of you are involved in it, by the way, just so you know. Who is it? <coughs> Hedge funds? Charles. What's your last name, Charles? At least people are attempting to answer. Wrong answers, but you know. Oh, Charles Bailey. Okay. Invest JB, that's two frigging wrong answers. Third one, strike out. Okay, I'm going to keep on leading you into it because this is so silly, but it's good though. I like it. So, your parents, the ones who are lucky enough to still have their parents, young enough, what do they invest in through their 401ks? Graham Passy said it. Mutual funds. For God's sakes. It's the mutual fund complex. And none of you guys could answer that basic question. Which is fine. At least after today, you are 2% more intelligent. Or knowledgeable about the markets. Yes. Thank you. Two, I mean mutual funds. Mutual funds are the 800 to 1,000 pound gorilla in the stock market. That's where mom and pop says, Fidelity, Magellan, yes, I mean, Contra Fund, I'm putting money in there. They're good guys, yeah. They're nothing but glorified brokers. They take your money and they trade like freaks. Vanguard, they take your money and buy every single S&P call that they can think of because, you know, they're, they're more index funds. And then the old guy comes on, right? The Vanguard old guy, who's like 99 years old. And then he says, always invest in index funds because they will always beat actively managed funds. What are actively managed funds? Actively managed funds means that you have a fund manager. 
and that fund manager manages your money. He doesn't have to call you and say, oh, I'm buying this. Most mutual funds cannot even perform with the market. And if they beat the market by 3%, they think they're gods. How do I know? Because my first job was at Putnam Investments, one of the finest and largest mutual funds in Boston, next to Fidelity. And I, and I worked under some of the finest fund managers out there. So, saying all that, you're right. Yes, and JB is right. Who get paid a few million bucks because they get a percentage of the assets under management. So if you're a ten billion dollar fund and you are getting two percent of that commission for doing nothing, okay. So what is two percent of ten billion? Quick, fast. Somebody tell me, quick. Let's see how good you guys are in math. What do you pass fifth grade math? JB failed. No, maybe he's right. Um, what's what's two percent of ten billion? Quick, somebody else other than JB. Can somebody else answer? 10% of 2 billion. Is 200 million. I think that's the correct answer. The numbers are so big, you know. That is the correct answer. No, it's not. It's actually 20 million. 200 million would be... somewhere along there okay because I give up too because I'm seeing here 20 million I'm seeing 20 million anyone have a correct answer Harry you're the tech guy can somebody give me an idea of 2% of 10 billion please Harry stop saying lol I need an answer because you're the tech guy okay what's what's 10% of 20 billion I'm sorry um, of 10 billion I need an answer. I guess none of you are going to give it to me, so it doesn't matter. Okay, it's 200 million. That's correct. It's 200 million. So you're making 200 million on a 20 billion dollar asset. Okay, so that's what happens. That's what the that's that's what the mutual funds do. All right, so I'm going to cap this here for a minute. So here's your long-term picture. If somebody you want to act really smart in front of your forget your spouse or girlfriend or your other half, whatever it is, partner, um, or better off you want to sound better in front of your boss or if you're your own boss you want to sound better in front of your friends I'm my own boss so I want to sound better in front of my friends then you say where do you think the market's going well uh, the market is actually going to go to 19,300 because all I did while I was doing these quick questions was draw this very simple rising wedge so what is the top of the wedge the top of the wedge ladies and gentlemen is somewhere around 19,411, which is 1,000 points higher from here. I think from that point, we get a massive consolidation channel that develops, okay? That's my opinion from up, from up uh, this level, okay? Which basically brings us down 
all the way. I mean, if we are going to have a global depression or things like that, um, and all the bears' wild, uh, uh, wildest fantasies come true, and we are going to go to 16,000 Dow, which I would actually like to happen before it happens, to be honest with you, um, then we are going to have a consolidation channel of this magnitude. Okay, there you go. That's your forecast. So sounds smart next time you're at a cocktail party or at a barbecue or wherever you are, okay? All right, so that's your long-term picture. So what I'm getting at is looking at where we are right now. There is no technical indication whatsoever. Looking at the internals, look at the stoves, the simple stoves. They are still climbing higher, okay? They are still climbing higher. Once we start to see a turn, like we did here, like this, a crossover, no bear market in sight. End of story. This is better than any frigging analyst sitting at Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, your dad, your mom, your financial analyst, your buddy who's a big shot, a big hot shot stock trader who makes twenty thousand dollars a day. You hear a lot about those, right? Oh, I'm just, you know, I just put in money on that you know, stock and it just went up, you know, made myself a hundred thousand in a week. Well, good luck. Okay. Point is, and by the way, we have done it in our forum, so pff, nothing new about that. Uh, so anyway, so. There's no sign whatsoever. Is it starting to top? Yes. So once you start to next time, you can do this on your own thing. Once we hit somewhere around that 19,000 level, start to basically say, wait. Okay, so that's it. Now, let's move on to technical stuff going on. Short-term stuff. Everyone clear with everything that I talked about? on market history and stuff? Yes? I need some responses, please. Okay, good. Two of my favorite guys, you know, Rick, uh, Ricky uh, and, uh, and uh, JB. Okay, they said yes, so I'll move along. So what, what I saw today was a little bit troubling on a short-term basis, all right? And that's why you heard me being a little bit negative about things. Doesn't mean individual stocks. I mean, come on, we had a 45% mover on CIDM. Come on, when, you, when I put those things out, and you know I'm not a small stock trader, you buy a little bit. If you can't afford too much, buy, I don't care. Buy 500 shares, buy 100 shares, buy 1,000 shares, buy 2,000 shares. There are traders who are not in the chat room and stuff who bought 5,000 shares. Can you imagine how much they made? So, you know, grab on those because those are fast movers. They move. Don't sit and analyze. Don't do into analysis paralysis. I've given BSPM, right? That's another one that's still on my screen. Went up, what, 45, 60, 70 percent in one day? And you sit there wondering, oh, well, should I get in? Just get in there. Buy a little bit. That's speculation. You got to do it. Without risk, there is no reward. With those small cap stocks, and I, I don't put them out just because they're like some frothy stock. I mean, there has to be a basic reasoning what I'm putting them out there. All right? Believe me. I am not going to put people in harm's way just for the heck of it. I'm not going to put myself in harm's way for the heck of it. So respect that, okay? I'm here to look. I'm, I got your back, like they say, right? I got your back but doesn't mean that it's not speculative. So always remember that. I'm not gonna put bullshit penny stocks out there so people can make like, you know, 20% and then lose half their money. That's not what I do here in the service. So saying all that, so this is what I saw. This is a wide channel. Let's, let's cover this very, you know, nicely. So this is, your, this is your wide channel on the daily. Upper end of the channel is somewhere around, um, one second, somewhere around 2277, all right? Lower end of the channel is uh, 2076. So what you're looking at is roughly 200 S&P points, 
right? You're looking at this, this, this is here, 200 S&P points. That's roughly, can somebody tell me roughly how many Dow points that is? Quick. Come on, be the teacher's pet. I've explained this many times. 200 S&P points is roughly how many Dow Jones points? 1,400. Thank you very much, Mr. Harry, right? Yes. Thank you very much. It's a factor of seven, roughly, seven or six. So 200 S&P points is roughly a factor of seven. Oops, sorry. Yeah, seven. I'd like to do a factor of eight. Wouldn't that be nice, Harry? So um, basically, uh, it's 1,400 points. So you are trading between a band of roughly 1,400 points, all right? So saying all that, um, that's the upper end. That's your lower end. Believe me, both ends are going to get touched. All right? I'm telling you right now. I've seen it happen way too many times. Like here, like here, like here, and then it's going to get here. We will most probably land up there by the end of the year. I'm telling you right now. Okay? So you can re-listen to this video cast and say, boy, that guy was right. It doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. It's what you did with my forecast is what matters. So what bothers me right now is this. That, as I've shown on my short-term charts, that bothers me is this, okay? Because generally when over a matter of bunch of days or so, we are that overbought, okay? We're that overbought, we tend to have a correction. Simple. Every time you get that, you know, that overbought, you get a correction. Now, I don't know if the correction is going to happen this week or next week. I'm following it very closely. I'm monitoring it. I mentioned something called a big short. Does that mean we're going to drop 10,000 points? No. The big short simply means that you make yourself 1,000% on your money. How about that? And maybe for once, you can actually show your other half, your wife or so, I actually made some real money. How about that? So when you do the big short, as I like to call it, whether it be 500 points, whether it be 300 points or 400 points, and you make 500% on your money without jumping out every five minutes, you gain a level of confidence, which is contagious, powerful. You go into the next trade saying, boom, I'm going to win. And you win. Why? Because your mental wiring, your amygdala is so wired up in the right way, you are going to do the right things. The biggest problem traders make is they never stick with the trade. They buy an S&P call, I mean, it's put, for example, today at four, let's say, or five. And the minute it goes to Six, they're like, sell, 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 sell. I just made 20%. And then they justify it in their head by saying, oh, I made a nice profit. Bullshit. One of the worst quotes or myths in the trading community is a profit is a profit. Garbage. A profit is never a real profit till you really stuck with the trade. Never forget that. Never forget that. Okay, weak minds say a profit is a profit. What do you mean a profit is a profit? That thing went to 10 plus bucks. You could have made 100% except you sold out for 20%. And you're telling me a profit is a profit? If you keep on thinking like that, you're never, ever going to make the real money. Now, that doesn't mean that you can scale out a little bit. Remember one thing I've always said, the bigger the money you have, off the top, the quicker you will sell. So if you put, let's say, I'm just giving you a hypothetical example. Let's say uh, you have $10,000 here. Okay? You have $10,000 at this trade right here. So that's that becomes um, that becomes 10,200, right? I'm sorry, that becomes 12,000 because you're up 20% except it will be 20,000 here. Can everyone see this? 
right? So if you don't understand technicals and if you don't really have the discipline and the courage to hold on, because the markets don't make it easy. It's not like a one way straight down that you go from 10K to 20K. But the ways to do it, which is another day's lesson, and that's another day's advanced coaching session lesson, no freebies, is how to manage that trade from 10,000 to 20,000. So of course you can sell a little bit at, at, at up 20%, but how you do it from 10,000 to 20,000 based on the technicals that I am constantly posting is something which requires mental discipline, technical discipline, bunch of luck, and the overall understanding of the market environment, which was certainly not conducive to anything positive today. Is everyone clear about that? I need a response. I need a response from everyone before, before I continue. Yes? yes? Okay. I'm writing it down. Everyone else, please. This is an interactive session, not a one-way uh, speech, okay? These are the ingredients that you need in order to effect an effective trade, to make the largest amount of profit. Charts, luck, Okay, so these are the five things. You have to understand the technicals. That's part of what we're doing. You have to understand the chart, especially the way I'm drawing it and what I'm putting out. Luck, hey, that's luck. Economic info, understanding the macro picture, why things are going down. That has to do with currencies. That has to do with the 10-year uh, bond, which went negative, by the way, today. So what does that mean? The yields went negative. That means money went back into the bond market. And then the overall gut feeling of the market, which is not something I can teach, which you have to learn from your own, from experience in the market. Is that clear to everyone? Technicals, charts, luck, economic info and understanding, okay? And the feel of the market. I have a feel of the market on certain days it's just gut experience. Some of you are great at some type of sport. You know the feel of, you know, of the thing or something you're good at, whatever. Maybe you're good at basket weaving. I'm not sure about that, okay? Maybe JB does basket weaving out there in the Midwest, all right? So the thing is, um, I, I don't know, but that's the feel of the market. That's something you gain from experience, gain from being in the market. You start to get that feel, your cognitive bias, on you know what's going on whatever the case may be so these important things here one two three four five i think are the most important things some of them will be self-taught some of them i can teach so that's it so let's go go into the uh, uh minute details here and uh and then i'm going to open it up for uh um uh, q a So you have a rising wedge here. This is a rising wedge. You have this. You have this. If I'm very bearish, you know, this is called cognitive bias. It's how way you look at the market. If you're leading bearish, you're going to say, listen, and I've showed this too, that the market will basically test this level, which I think it will. I don't know if it's going to do it right away. And this is going to affect any stocks that you trade, mind you, okay? Other than select stocks which have not depended on the market. 
So this was the big breakout point right there. What was the breakout point in that S&P? Was 2,113. 2,113, right there. I had shown this as an ascending triangle. If some of you more focused guys listen to it, this was an ascending triangle, which none of you, well, a lot of you didn't really see or believe. And we broke out of the ascending triangle. And now we broke out here, okay? Now I've drawn the charts very specifically, and that's why it's so important that you review every one of my charts. I said 2150, all I did was draw the, power, uh, the consolidation channel to see where it goes, and that's where it is. Now, this is not good. If this continues down, at some point between now and, the, and next week, remember, we're not going to go too far too quick because we have the end of the month coming, and I believe they're going to end July on a strong note. So worst case scenario, we're going to test this level at 21.15. We all closed at 21.66, right? 0.12. 21.66.12. I need one of you to tell me how many Dow points that is if we go to 21.15. I already did it. Quick. If we get down here and test that breakout level, which is, which is the standard procedure, how many Dow points is this? 350 to 400. That's correct. 350 to 400. You're right. 350 to 400 Dow points, easy. Not going to happen in a straight line, but that would be the swing trade. Once we hit there, if things, if things, um, if things basically move, uh, a market wants to go higher, we're going to have a very sharp bounce from here that's going to try to take us into this channel. This is the channel that every bear's worst nightmare. Okay? This channel. This is the way I draw my charts, and I've been right. This channel brings you up to the 2300 level, and it's not going to be a channel that's going to be that easy to enter. This channel is what I'm talking about. This one, ladies and gentlemen drawing it out to you okay this one is everyone clear on that okay this this, this is the channel i'm talking about there oops sorry right there but before it does that it has to have the slingshot effect which is it has to come down before it goes higher that's just the way it is now the other thing which some of you who have taken advanced coaching sessions with me know what is happening here that tells me that tells you aside from the fact that stochastics are to, uh, showing uh, uh, um, serious overbought levels? What is another thing? Oops, sorry. What is another thing that's telling you that we are overbought on a swing basis on the daily charts? Can somebody answer me? I mean, I don't expect a real answer from a lot of people who have, haven't taken the ACS, but this is. This is the real deal. This is why I'm good at what I do. This I, this I know, we're overbought, but we could stay overbought more. What else is telling you that we're going to basically come down a bit? And that's why I said use caution. The histogram is one. Okay, that's fine. The histogram is one. You're looking at the internals. The histogram is coming down. Very good. Uh, a very good uh, 3450 cross. 3450 cross is great. It's going higher. What's the big deal with that? So histograms are basically depreciating as we are climbing. So that's a negative divergence, right? And we're climbing in price, but histograms are coming down. That's a negative divergence. Very good point. Outside of the Bollinger Bands? Outside of the Bollinger Bands? It's very little outside. I'm looking at all the answers coming to 34, 50 day cross is perfect. It's fine. I think you're close to the answer, uh, uh, Ricky, but you're not, you're not seeing it. I've explained this many times, by the way. And a crossover, negative divergence is on uh, okay, stochastic. Okay, this, this is negative divergence. This is not really that negative because it, you know, it can stay higher. 
I'm not going to give it that. Yeah, it might. It will probably reset, but that it's not going to be that easy. I'm going to give you a clue. It's hidden in. It's hidden in here. A E R C. You see, Lee is giving some good answers, but he's giving answers from a very retail perspective. And I'm glad that Lee is here as a as a. Excuse me. Somebody, please mute the microphone. It looks like they're beating their dog. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, I'm sorry, I got muted myself. I said Lee's answers are very good, but they're typical retail answers because Lee is not trained to really understand the real story of the market. Okay. And we'll teach him, and that's why he's going to be great. Um, so the answer lies in this zone. I want somebody to step up. Everyone can hear me, right? Earning season is always choppy. There is no bearing on it. Gus says the box. The box is fine. The Davos box, it's contained within the Davos box. There's no, you know, there's nothing yet. Channel rejection. Where is the rejection? You're like making up things right, left, and center. It's called cognitive bias. You're just seeing things and you're just saying it. There is no channel rejection. It's going straight towards the upper channel. Let me just put it this way. I'm going to give the clue because none of you, you know, obviously have forgotten and all of you in this session tonight, okay, all of you, and I, I, I mean this, have to sign up for the advanced coaching session. The ones you're already signed up, great. I'm going to be spending more time within the next two weeks because I have more time because my wife is uh, going to be visiting her sister up in the beautiful north called Canada, and I will have more time. And you all better freaking sign up. So I'll spend all weekend with you guys, you know, whether it be early Saturday or Sunday evening, whatever, because a lot of you are really lost in simple dynamics of what what the story is. KJS has partly right. He goes falling out of the rising wedge. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. Not a good enough, you know. Not not the full story. So all of you sign up. Let's have a session like this. Except I'm doing it for free. I'll go into some real, real details. And you just pay me for the cost of doing these. You know, I'm paying a lot of money for the, for the go-to meeting and all that stuff. I don't need these webinars to feed my family. So make sure you guys do that. And you keep on being stingy uh, uh, things, which a lot of you guys members are. Uh, then you're going to keep on hurting yourself when the markets really get nutty, which I think it's about to go nutty, both on the upside and the downside. So histogram divergence we already talked about. I am repeating. Somewhere in here lies the answer. It has to do with the moving averages. I have given the first part of the answer. Somebody give me the second part of the answer. Then uh, reverting to the mean. Thank you very much, Harry. MAs are widening too. Yeah, MAs widening is great news, Lee. Lee, you better sign up for the ACS, dude. Okay, we'll teach you things you never see before. Harry, you're right. It's very simple. Here's the pathway. Here is the pathway. This was a crossover, which was excellent. Right there was the sign that the market were going to. And I've showed this on my video cast and on my advanced coaching sessions. You got a crossover at 34 and the 50. Oh, boy, you better stay along the market. You get a cross down of the 34 and the 50-day moving average. You better stay short the market. It's really simple. doesn't mean every day it's going to be a down day. Because there are days like this when the market's up like 100 points, 100 points here, that's going to throw you off. But anyway, bottom line is 
these moving averages are just a okay it is the distance travel this is the highway that the market likes to travel in the 50, 34 and the 50 day moving averages anytime you deviate too much away from the highway maybe you had too much to drink all right no cops on the highway you're like you know if you live out in the in nevada or something you know you're driving out in the desert well what do you want to do you want to call your wife or your boyfriend girlfriend whatever it is husband and you say okay honey i'm way off the moving average of the highway i want to get back on the road and he she or whoever it is says yes get back on the road well exactly what happens with the market you move away too much like you crash type scenario away from the moving averages like we did here I'll show this again. This is your moving average. I'm going to track it. Hold on. Here's your moving average. Beautiful. You move too much away from it. You're going to go stat. Your standard deviation here was probably about four. Minus four. The market came back roaring. That's another day story. I've explained that many, many times on my on my on my service. This is the big short unwind. Nine trillion dollars worth of notional shorts getting covered. They're saying, okay, well, it's not falling apart. Brexit is actually going to be good overall for Europe, which I think it will. Because you know what happens? When shit hits the fan, people change. Has it not happened in your life? That's the way markets work. All right? Man changes at the face of an abyss. Remember that. If you if it if somebody is real and they're really in some deep crap whether it be and especially for their own fault and if they're serious about saving their family or themselves they change right same thing with the markets same thing with what happened in in, in england the bottom line is from the moving averages we shot out way too much right now this distance traveled is probably about plus five I ca i'll call it plus six so if you have a plus six standard deviation, standard deviation, if you don't know statistics, look it up, okay? Standard deviation of plus six. That means you move too far away from the highway. You're either on this ditch or that ditch. So what do you do? You want to come back to where the highways are going. The highways are moving nice. They're moving up. So you are going to basically revert back to the moving averages. It is known, as my good friend Harry has said, mean reversion happens every single time. The time frame of the mean reversion, that's the question. And that's something that I specialize in. And I, and, and I, and, and I try to point out as much as possible. It doesn't happen in one day. So it is mean reversion. What does mean reversion mean? It means we have moved away too much from the highway, which is this. This is your highway. We have moved way too much from it, which we have. But there are other nuances in the picture, which I won't get into right now, or else we'll be here till midnight, and, and it doesn't make sense. Okay? So sign up for the sessions. I'll explain all this over the weekend. There are many other nuances which says we can stay at these high divergences, believe it or not, for a while before we correct. And this moving average that you're looking at can sharply move higher. That means the distance traveled becomes narrower. Common sense. So the mean reversion will happen. I don't think it's going to happen in the month of July. Whichever the case, this gap is wide. It could happen very quickly. I don't think it's going to happen that quickly in the month of July. I don't think we're going to go to 2115, which was the breakout level on the, on the S&P 500, which would offer us some fantastic buying opportunities yet, because there are sectors that are moving, including the biotech sector, which I sh highlighted very, very strongly last week. And it's moving exactly in the direction that I said. It's at 280. IBB is at 280. We are going to go to 290 to 300. And, I, and if you don't, you know, please scroll back. Go to the media section of my Twitter feed. Look at the charts. So mean reversion is going to happen. 
And that's that's why I'm saying we this thing is a bit troubling. Now, will it be just a quick, fast drop? That's a lot of drop. That's 50 points. 50 points means uh, uh, seven, 350 points. Yes, it can happen. It'd be nice if it happens. We'll be positioned to make a lot of money off that. We made money off a 100 point drop in the market with a hundred with 150 plus percent return on the S&P puts intraday. You could get into it intraday. You don't even have to position yourself the day before. What more could you ask for more from a service? Okay. However, in between, this is a daily chart. There are other support levels and we'll see what happens. But this is a large deviation and it should be covered. In the meantime, what is most important is the fact that you have to watch this. It's not rocket science, so I'm telling you very simple. You have to watch this. If this thing crosses below, if this thing crosses below here, and these things don't, are never that easy, okay? The robots know when everyone's trying to short, they'll go the other way. It might just come back, test the 80 level, and bounce from here. It doesn't always do this doesn't always do this okay and that's it so yes there is an overbought condition yes we are tactically playing the shorts yes I have a few short puts on the S&P but I have longs too right not that many but uppers upside we have 2190 we can go 2190 easy just like this Boop. And God help us if we enter 2190, the next level of resistance will be up above 2200. People can imagine we can go to 2200. It can happen. Imagine if the biotechs really wake up and the banks really wake up. We can go to 2200 on the S&P 500. And everyone's going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And they will still not be in the trade. That's why the market's rising. Because there are way too many shorts. or and there's nobody really buying the market. End of story. On that note, I'd open up for a few minutes of Q&A, and then we're going we're gonna to wrap up because we've already been going for a while. Make it quick, and I'll give some good answers. Any um, sessions open for Q&A? Anyone have any questions, please? I'm here to answer. Can everyone hear me? Am I on mute? Um, very good question, Lee. No, Lee, I don't look at. Um, I don't look at. Um, I'm going to give you an example. For example, Tesla, right? One of my best shots today. Um, made a real decent sum. Wish I had gone in a lot harder because I was so right. Um, and the chart's not looking good at all okay look at this straight down on the daily which is no good tesla is going down where is it going down it's probably going to go down to 208 and the best case scenario would be it goes to under 191 which i doubt but it's going to easily fall no i don't look at uh, one minute charts i look at five minutes i look at three minutes uh, five minutes i look quite often when i'm doing active trading i look at 15 minutes Okay, 15 minutes, very useful. Because sometimes when you're short, it hits the 15 minute floor and then it bounces, right? Just the way it hit here. It bounced the bottom line and boom. You know, it came down to 219. Of course, I use four different chart platforms. So obviously I have a lot more eyes looking at the charts. Um, so 219 and then it immediately bounced to 220 and then ended the day here. But look at the daily. If you're doing the swing short, which requires discipline, patience, luck and technicals as i've explained then this is certainly telling you that it's going to at least test the 34 and the 50 which is 216 stock closed at 220 a four buck move down on the stock on the options you should get a double almost on your money next question please i have we have a phil basner in here phil are you a new free trial? Oh, JB, that's your friend. Great. Welcome, Phil. 
All right. Question number two. Any questions? So let me just, uh, while I'm waiting to hear another question, let me just explain one thing to you here. This chart is telling me that if things go wrong, we at least have 216. So we got four points under the belt. Or we could get lower Bollinger at 198. This is a good short because this candle formation is no bueno. This is no good. All right, straight down. Resets happen all the way down here. And once it resets, don't mess around. You got to cover your short. Any other stock anyone wants to look at? Hey, uh, really? two thousand. Uh, one person at a time. You sounded like a like a like an android. What did you say? Okay, Google. All right, let's look at Google first. So Google charts were drawn before, right? I have these beautiful channels drawn. Nobody draws charts like this, and that's a fact. It's a fact. Show me somebody else who draws charts like this. Drew another channel. Okay. So what Google is doing here is consolidating. What I like about it on an hourly basis, on a short-term basis, is this. These stochastics look like they're moving higher. They're certainly not moving down. They don't get overbought till they get above 75 or 80. I would expect Google to get a, you know, once it hits that 760 level, for short-term traders, that is something that it's going to hit resistance. It also testing the downside of this uptending channel right here. Once it enters the channel, that's when the fun begins, all right? Because these channels matter. They matter. Once it enters the channel over, let's say, 765 or so, all of a sudden, it's an acceleration move all the way up to 785. So you're talking about 20-point increments we're talking about. Earnings are in the way, all that stuff, so anything can change. On an earnings blow, blow up, I am looking at the stock to trade somewhere around 740, um, and I think it's going to hold the ground here at around 735. 735. Do I expect a bigger blowout? Hey, look, anything can happen. All right. But Google's got a very fine uh, 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 financial CFO. I forget her name. The lady who came from um, the lady who came from Morgan Stanley. She is extremely uh, um, financially. Uh, Ruth um, Ruth Posak Porat. Thank you, Harry. Harry's the best man. So Ruth, Ruth Porat, yes, Ruth Porat is excellent. She manages well. She knows how to talk to Wall Street because she comes from Wall Street. So I don't expect Google to say anything stupid like they're building another uh, um, the the whatever you know for another hundred million bucks that they used to do in the old days. Okay, they're not going to pull a Elon Musk type of thing like I want to basically build the next uh, uh, the truck. Uh, 16 wheeler wheeler uh, running on batteries. I thought that was such a dumb thing and um, honestly it's like so really stupid I never liked Tesla's anyway, but I'm just saying that was such a the master plan Oh, I want to be a solar company. We already know that they want to be a solar company He's probably got a solar power uh, powered flush in his uh, in his toilet um, But that has nothing to do with anything. There was nothing new in that so-called master plan So Google I would this is a consolidation channel I'm drawing it out in front of you. There you go. Nice consolidation channel. One second, please. Do the same way here. Put some bright colors so people can see it. So there's your consolidation. In other words, it's a tight trading range. The trading range is 750. On the upper end is 760. Anything break above that, we test the underbelly of this channel, which is 765. God help the shorts if it enters 765. It's going to move so fast, so furious, it's not even funny. And that is all depicted in the form of technical channels, which we can see on the daily.
there. Okay, so basically what I would do is I would take this line, move it down here a little bit. Good. So anything above anything above 761, 762, you can be exact to the dot because the algos know it. But once we enter this channel, the upper end of this channel is 777. For a 20 buck move on Google, what are we talking about? It's nothing. It can happen in, you know, in an hour. Whichever the case, this channel excites me. If it gets there, this channel is showing the 800 level. Can Google go up 40 bucks on earnings? Absolutely. We'll see. It's always a bet. Everything's looking fine here. It's staying overbought. That means strength, uh, and we're good to go. Um, I have JB. Your mic's working. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's good. All right. Not that, not that I want to hear you, but yes, I hear you. I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, so here is price line chart for people want to see. Now, I've drawn price line to perfection. It doesn't mean that I can trade it like a maniac every day. Um, what I, this is what I don't like about price line right now. Look at the daily. It's flushing down. I think price line numbers are going to be weak at least a guidance because of all these terrorist incidents and everything that happened i think price line is going to retrace where can it retrace i would say the worst case scenario 1221 that's a 100 point drop it happens on price line or at least 1300 which is a 36 point drop which can happen in 5 minutes you know that and that's a 3450 day moving average a buy around 1220 on price line would be phenomenal this is a daily chart this is not good this is clearly telling you that the that it wants to reset, and that reset could be stuck at 1300, or it can be slightly below 1300, or it can be 1221. I don't know yet, but this is the daily picture on price line, and one has to be, you know. Now, can somebody trade that intraday for five, 10, 15, 20 points back and forth? Absolutely, they can. They have to be fast, they have to be furious, and they cannot be looking and analyzing too much on those points. This was a large sell volume here. Uh, almost half a million shares got traded. And remember, it's a $1,000 plus dollar stock, $1,300 stock, half a million shares is a lot. Here's your downtrend line on price line, okay? And that downtrend line, I might need to readjust it a little bit, is right there. Any break above 1360, 1364 brings it up to the upper Bollinger. There are many different things at play here. Upper Bollinger at 1384, upper Darvis at 1393, and then of course the infamous gap fill, which is at 1392 to 1400. Here is your uptrend line, the blue line that takes me up to 1415. All these numbers are valid. There's nothing wrong in this picture here, okay? At least looking at the daily, the only thing wrong is the internals, which is giving us an early warning sign. Internals are not always correct. They can always, you know, they can always turn. This is your consolidation channel. It is at the bottom of the consolidation channel. Any break of that would move the stock down quick, 20, 30 points. Now, here's your 50-day moving average at 1299, call it 1300. Another support at 1314. The 34 and the 50-day moving average is showing no no technical damage whatsoever, as you can see. The gap, you know, it's 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 a gaping mouth. You know, it's moving up. So unless these things are turning down, like it did here, like it did here, <coughs> you do not expect any sort of, excuse me. any major deterioration in the stock. So the consolidation channel, it could easily move up like this. Or the biggest danger is if it breaks 1300, stay short all the way down um, to, to, I would say all the way down to 1221. Apple chart before earnings. I've shown the Apple charts, I will show it again. The best Apple chart that I can show is here. There you go, okay? So this is my Apple chart that I've asked people to basically trade on and they've done very well. So here is Apple. Don't like that reversal hammer. That is a reversal hammer, okay? That is a reversal hammer. I called Apple all the way down here. It went all the way up here. Right now, Apple on the daily, everything seems to be topping. Not a good sign, okay? 
Not Armageddon, but not a good sign. So here's a couple of things. This I don't like. That's an inverted hammer. Okay, inverted hammer. Not the end of the world, it's an inverted hammer. Distance traveled between the 50, 34, and this standard deviation is too high. So it must it must recalibrate. Best buy on Apple would be around the, uh, around the 97 level. If Apple gets to 97 before earnings, buy it, I think. This is not necessarily good, but not necessarily bad. It's starting to top. But then it can come down to 80 RSI. It's the same thing as stochastics, and then bounce from here, right? Nothing goes above 100, remember that. So if it pulls back to 80, you can buy it. All technical stuff, all good, all effective, and you can always make money off that. This is, this is definitely a good sign. However, this it might create a consolidation flag. I would like to see it back below 98 or so. And then if earnings are good, the stock will move up. There is a gap fill here that I showed. That's why this gap, this box is a gap. Okay, remember the gap fill? So the gap fill here brings the stock up to 104. Can that happen? Absolutely yes. So that's your picture on Apple. Too many questions. What stock should I invest in right now based upon the market chart? Phil, that's a dumb question. I don't blame you for it. But you know what? I suggest what you do is go through all my, uh, all my, uh, uh, um, real-time Twitter feed. I know you might be new to the market. If I give you one chart, and I, I, and believe me, I have a lot of killer charts out there, killer uh, things that I'm presenting every single day, uh, then maybe you should pay me like $10,000 a, um, a month to make you uh, 50000 okay? There is no one stock should you invest in right now based upon the market chart. That is not a valid question. I don't blame you for it. That's a very rookie question. There is no, I repeat, one chart, one stock, what stock? There are stocks, lots of stocks, which are going higher. And I suggest that you go through my um, Twitter feed, get a feel of it, and then we can, and then you can basically see what works or not works. Can you do a one hour chart on Khan? Okay, he keeps on asking me that, so let me do that. So Phil, again, I'm a very direct guy. I'm a pro trader. So I just want to squash that question because it's a silly question. It's not your fault. You're not trained to think like a pro trader or like a tactical trader. That's why you asked that question. So I do apologize for answering in a direct way. But like they say, bad habits have to be squashed right off the bat. Okay. Uh, let's take a quick look at, uh, I don't have that much time here. For the buyout play Twitter, I'm totally with you. I think Twitter is good for a buyout. I charted Twitter all the way from way below um, on uh, on my work. And let me see here. I don't have Twitter here. Okay, I'll pull out Twitter. Look at these charts. Monsters. This Biomarine just broke the frigging downtrend line. What more could he ask for? This stock is going to go to 105, if not 115. Unbelievable. Facebook. I'm surprised I don't have Twitter here. I got to draw a new one. Okay. So I'm going to show you a simple version of Twitter. Oh, I already had my charts drawn on it, so bear with me one second. There you go, gradient. So this is a long-term daily chart of Twitter. You got some big channels in motion here. So if you look at the upper end of the channel, the stock is gonna go to $21, which I predicted way at the lows. These stock, These things were drawn months ago. That's the reason why they populated themselves right away. Okay, and um, I'm going to take this line out. I'm going to put this. This is all chart formations. This is a uh, falling wedge, this line and this line, also a channel. Upper end of the channel is around 21. If you do get a buyout on Twitter, you're going to see somewhere around, bear with me one second, you're going to somewhere around $30. That's what you're going to see. Twitter should get at least a 50% premium uh, based on its, uh, based on what it does. So this is a, this is a, this is definitely uh, a play here. The stock has barely started to move 
and uh, using the Fibonacci retracement, the 50% Fibonacci retracement is $45. Not that anyone can ever imagine it, but believe me, crap happens in the market. Okay, I've seen enough to know that, so nobody can ever argue with me about that. But at this point, on a swing trade, I am looking at the stock at 30. Might take weeks um, or maybe a couple of months, but Twitter is definitely uh, in that position. I personally would not get Twitter, get so Twitter can ruin. Uh, okay, uh, JB, uh, his comment is useless, so I throw it away. Uh, you have no idea what Dorsey is and uh, what he's doing. Twitter has enough energies and a few things they can do to tweak their system, including charging people like us for posting content, um, uh, business content on Twitter. Let's say $10 a month will bring $4 billion into their coffers in two seconds. Uh, I'm sorry to say, but your statement about your personal statement about Dorsey and stuff, um is 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 not good the streaming nfl and nba games is huge but it's not a big money maker um so so that's it so just letting you know um uh, re- everyone has their opinion um and dorsey is either liked or not liked i don't really care um <clears throat> you know except when he has an isis type beard every time he comes on tv anybody with like very large beards um <clears throat> I'm sorry, I get confused. You know, I'm saying I, I don't know if they're a terrorist or if they're a hipster from Brooklyn. I mean, it just bothers me too much facial hair. So let's move on. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm talking so much, it's uh, getting me, uh, my throat's dry. Okay. Uh, there was uh, the CON, uh, really nothing changed, Namesh. So I really am not going to do this again. Uh, I've already sent you the chart on that. And. Uh, Let's see here. I think that's it. So nothing really changed on that, okay? I know you probably have a big position on it, uh, Namesh, on on CON, but uh, I'll just do it just for sake of, so you can go to you know bed at night, like saying, okay, you just saw your CON, CONN. Um, the stock is very cheap. Everyone likes to get cheap stocks. It, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's looking good. A retest of the 50-day moving average is 872. Percentage-wise, that's a pretty sweet move. Let's look at an hour chart. Not bad, but doesn't tell me anything. This is one of those technical charts that I can't figure out. You got an upper end at 771, okay? You can trade it. Is this one day going to turn into a big monster? Maybe. I have no idea what they do. Does anyone know what Cons Incorporated is? What is this? I don't know the stocks, that's what I'm telling you, asking you. What does cons do? And who got you into this stock? Probably a good friend who said he's going to make billions of dollars buying this stock. Electronics. So what type of electronics? What? Does anyone know this stock? I told you, friend of mine. And I read traders like an open book, yeah. Most traders get into crap because, I mean, I'm sure crap, this stock could be huge. I should never say that. You know, it's got a Darvas box here, upper end 780. Once it breaks above that, a lot of people are going to start noticing it. Lower end is 670. Uh, what do you call, the point is that, you know, friends tell you it's a great investment. He works there. They're doing stuff. I don't go by that. You know, it works sometimes, you know, but I don't go by what friends say. You know, friends with benefits, right? Just kidding. Um, Guys, I got to wrap up. Have a great evening. I want every one of you to sign up for the advanced coaching sessions. And the ones who don't, I feel sorry for you guys. I'm just going to tell you that straight out. I am holding multiple sessions this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So take advantage of my time because I have uh, downtime here on my family side. I like you all of you. I just find that the stupidity is the worst trade trader that anyone can have. So try to kill the stupidity. But do I'm going to go through some very intense details on my weekend sessions. So I'd like to see a couple of sign-ups. And on that note, have a great evening. This session will be uploaded on um, on uh, uh, the Twitter Reel. I'm um, sorry, the YouTube Clueless A Trading Channel. Everyone put their uh, email addresses in there. And uh, like I said, like to see a good number of people on this weekend's advanced coaching sessions because I'll have more time to go through a lot of stuff. Thank you for listening, and good luck with all you do.